Hi, this is Randy Wyckoff, the Dean of the College of Public Health at East Tennessee State University. And I'm pleased to provide the Public Health Weekly Update with data accurate through July 28th, 2022. This week, I wanna ask you a question, what is the importance of the World Health Organization designating monkeypox as a public health emergency of international concern? For those of you that wanna review the clinical aspects of monkeypox, please refer to my June 16th update uh, that uh, I'll also include in the covering email. So what is a public health emergency of international concern? Well, according to the 2005 international health regulations, which are supported by 196 countries, it is an extraordinary event which is determined to constitute a public health risk to other states through the international spread of the disease and potentially require an international global coordinated response. Obviously it has to be sudden, unusual, unexpected of an impact countries beyond the country of origin <clears throat> and may require international action. So you may have heard that WHO was not unanimous in their recommendation. So let's look at the data that led them to make this decision. Uh, as of two days ago, uh, yesterday, excuse me, uh, almost 20,000 cases in 76 countries, but importantly, 98%, virtually all of them are in countries that have not historically had monkeypox. About 10% have been hospitalized, and as of yesterday, there were five deaths reported, though that may go up. This map shows you where the cases are. The dots in blue are cases in countries that have historically had monkeypox. The orange uh, circles are in countries that have not. And you can see predominantly <clears throat> in Europe and North America, though there are also countries in Africa as well. In the United States, we've had 3,500 cases, about one fifth of all the world's cases, as of yesterday reported from every state except Alaska, Montana, Vermont, and Wyoming. And you can see the number of cases is going up. So just like in the first couple of months of COVID, vex, of COVID outbreak, we don't know where this is going, but right now the signals are that this is an increasing number. Uh, in terms of the states, what we're seeing is this incredible variation in the number of cases in each state. And again, this is very reminiscent of the early months of COVID, where uh, the, the big the, the outbreak was starting in our big cities in our more, most populous states. But you can see between the uh, the 10th ranked state and the number one state, there's a tenfold difference. At this point, uh, Tennessee has had 20 reported cases, but again, these numbers will go up rapidly. So again, just to remind you, it's a monkeypox is a virus related to smallpox, but much less severe in humans. Probably initially was a zoonosis from spread from an animal to humans, but human to human contact is possible, which we'll talk about. The disease has a particular pattern in that there's about a one to two week lag period between the time that you're infected and the time you develop symptoms. Then you start with what we would call a prodrome fever, malaise, headache, weakness, a little bit like what you get when you first get COVID as well. But swollen lymph nodes, that's pretty unusual. And then what we call a four stage rash. And I'll talk about this in a second. Um, it often starts in the mouth more on the extremities and face, maybe on the palms and soles, and maybe painful. So two of the things that are pretty uh, unusual about this is the, swole, the widespread swollen lymph nodes and the painful lesions. And then after the, this four-phase rash, it tends to scabs over and drops off. Just to remind you, macular rash to start with, that is, you can see it, but you don't feel it. Papular, you can feel. Vesicular, it's full of fluid. Pustular, it's full of pus, body uh, secretions, and then it crusts over. So it's usually a self-limited disease, but it may be serious in children, pregnant women, and folks with immune suppression. In Africa, the death rate was reported to be 4 to 10%. There turns out there are two types, two clades of virus, monkeypox virus. One of them, the West African clade, which is the one that's spreading widely in the world, has a lower mortality rate, fortunately, where death does occur is usually from secondary infections. There are vaccines uh, that are recommended, and there are some antiviral drugs as well. Now, I mentioned that spread human to human, usually with by direct contact with an infectious rash, scab, or body fluid, uh, or prolonged 
uh, close respiratory contact, uh, particularly during sex. And right now, about 90 plus percent of the cases are men who report having sex with other men. Uh, you apparently can get it from from touching items that have been directly infected with body fluids. Pregnant women can spread it to their fetus. And then it's also possible, not so much in the States, but in the tr countries that traditionally have monkeypox, you can get it from animals as well. The virus spreads from the time the symptoms start. Uh, it usually lasts two to four weeks. Those who are not symptomatic don't spread it. Uh, as a When I wrote this slide, it, it, monkeypox was not known to spread through semen or vaginal fluid. I did read a preliminary article yesterday that suggested it may be in body fluids like semen. We'll have to wait and see if that pans out. The CDC recommends that you avoid close skin-to-skin -skin contact with people who have a rash that looks like monkeypox. That's pretty good advice, I would guess. Obviously, don't touch the scabs. Don't kiss, hug, cuddle, or have sex with someone with monkeypox, another good piece of advice. Uh, don't share utensils or cups with someone. Again, these are all focused on if you know you've had someone, you're exposed to someone with monkeypox. And then more generally, if you plan to consider and uh, attend an event, consider how much close personal skin-to-skin -skin contact is likely to occur there. The CDC also recommends if you're sick, obviously you wanna isolate yourself at home for 21 days, stay in a separate room if you can. And then the vaccination for people who are at high risk of exposure. Uh, and again, there's the, there are some updated vaccines for smallpox that appear to be quite effective. Um, and the vaccine can be given to folks who uh, have been exposed, particularly uh, men who've had sex with men uh, and obviously you want to report it to health authorities. Um, one of the recommendations that came out just yesterday from WHO is a recommendation that gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men consider limiting their number of intimate sexual contacts, at least in the short term, especially in those regions in which monkeypox is spreading quickly. Uh, monkeypox is one of those diseases that we should be able to control with traditional public health methods. And so here's the sort of the schematic of that. You have an individual who develops symptoms. You do two things. One, you identify who their close contacts have been. And of course, you isolate that person for 21 days. Fortunately, in the case of monkeypox, there are some treatments that you, that you give them. You consider vaccinating the people that were closest contacts. And you keep a close eye on all of them. And if anyone develops any symptoms, you follow the same pattern, you isolate and treat. But you can also consider some actions and activities for people in very high risk groups, including the possibility of vaccinating them. And then for everybody, education is really important. If we do all these basic public health things, we should be able to return to normal, keep a close eye and make sure there aren't new cases. Hopefully, if we do this, we can get control of this. Um, there are some characteristics of monkeypox that make it a little bit harder to control in that there is this prodromal period uh, towards the end of which you may be infectious, but not particularly sick. So obviously, folks in high-risk communities, high-risk areas need to be more cautious than others. But for all of us, if we do good common sense at this point, it looks like this could be a disease that we get a handle on. So what's the importance of WHO designating it as a public health emergency of international concern? Mostly that it tells us that this is something <clears throat> that is spreading widely in dozens and dozens of countries. We don't have a handle on it yet. We're not under control yet. And as much, even if we get control of it in one country, we could still import it from other countries. So it does require a global national effort uh, to take those actions that make the most sense. As always, if you're sharing this video with anyone, please let us know. We'd be happy to add them to the website. Thanks, as always, to Dara Young for editing, producing, adding captions, and posting this video. If you have any questions about monkeypox, COVID, 
any emerging public health issue, please let me know. I'd be happy to try to address it in these weekly updates. Until next week, please be well.